Today's video is focused primarily on singles. So we're calling this video Singles Edition. Right. We get a lot of feedback from singles that are watching the videos and they get a lot out of them. I think it's a good idea because you don't wait until you're married to start working on your marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to be listening to material. But because we have so many singles that are listening to the videos and watching the videos, we felt like it would be good to give them some tips on how to have a happy single life, which ultimately leads to a happy married life. Okay, so okay, he's talking about you know being happy. That's the first thing that you mentioned. So I think we should start there. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is okay. You have to be happy with yourself first, right? Because if you're not happy with yourself, you know, the single person, you're fooling yourself if you think you know being married is just going to make you happy. Right, right. You have to be happy with yourself before you can expect to be happy with somebody else. Mm -hmm. So enjoy spending time, you know, with yourself. You know, mm -hmm. spending time with God. You know, take yourself out on a date. Right. Just be content. Just with you know being. Being with yourself. You know? Right. And then developing your hobbies and developing your career. And, you know, one of the mistakes that I think I made before I got married was that I put a lot of things on hold because I said, well, I don't want to do that until I'm married. Well, who says you have to do that? You know, go ahead and decide to have a happy life so you actually have something more than your flesh to offer when you get married. <laughs> right. Because that can be kind of old. Yeah. You wanna, I think you want to bring more to the table than just, you know. Right. Body. Curves. So the next thing is don't set unrealistic expectations for a spouse. Right. Be realistic with your expectations. I know that in youth group growing up, they told us to make out our list of all the likes that we want for our spouse and all the dislikes that we don't want for our spouse. And we list things like, you know, for me, it was I want her to be saved. I want her to be anointed. I want her to be filled with the spirit. I want her to be uh, uh, real cute with this color hair and that color eyes and these kind of lips and all. And you make out all these lists, this list up for, for this person. And the problem, nothing wrong with the list. Yeah. So, so I'm not saying that. But the problem is that sometimes you make your list what I call an idol. Yeah, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. You do that by forgetting about everybody else in the world, the other 7 billion people on the planet that maybe mm -hmm. don't fit that list. Yeah, And then, I mean, too, you got to think about this list. I mean, it shouldn't be all, like, you know, apparent stuff. Like, right. you don't want my man to be, you know, 6'4", you know, bodybuilder, mm -hmm. you know, great smile, mm -hmm. you know, brown skin, not too light, not too dark, um, nice wavy hair, um, good skin. I mean, come on. Don't be That's shallow. Kind of crazy. Don't be shallow. Don't be shallow. It's more to uh, 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 having a wonderful spouse than the just physical aspect yeah. or the financial aspect. Because right. I know a lot of people that say, well, she got to have her own money because she sure ain't going to be spending none of mine. Mm -hmm. You know, or the other way around for the woman, you know, well, he got to have, well, he got to have this, he got to have that. He got to be able to whine and dine me and rah, 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 rah. Yeah. No, let's just kind of calm all that down. While those things may be important. Yeah. You can't allow those things to, again, be an idol. Yeah, because God knows, like, who you're going to marry. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, and this person is, like, perfect for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to miss out on this person that God has for you because mm -hmm. you have all these unrealistic, you know, expectations. Right. Uh, my wife said it so beautifully. She said, God already knows who you're going to marry. So that means that God knows that the individual that he has designed for you to marry, or we can say the type of individual that he's designed for you to marry, can make you happier than your wildest dreams like they, they they have ways of making you happy that you're not even conscious of right now but god knows that if your list looks like that just go through a little bit and kind of fine tune it edit it yeah and allow god to make the list and stop making the list out of your flesh <laughs> okay so the next thing is if you desire to be married god wants you to be married you know, i hear a lot right. of people say well you know well if god wants me to be married i'll be married you know well i'm single i've been single this long well maybe god doesn't want me to be married but Mm -mm. Don't feed into that. If you want to be married, mm -hmm. God wants you to be married. Right. Well, what if you did that with your salvation? Well, you know, I'm a sinner, and if God wants me to be saved, well, he'll save me. You'll go to hell thinking like that. No. I mean, if you want to be married, God wants you to be married. Just like if you want to make him your Lord and Savior, he wants to be your Lord and Savior. So don't just try to just throw everything on him. No, uh, there's a scripture that says faith works. Or in other words, one translation says that without uh, works, your faith is dead. You know, faith without works, it is dead. So if you really believe that God wants you to be married, then it's up to you to do something about it or be proactive about it. You know, be friendly. Fix yourself up. 
That means bathe every once in a while. <laughs> no, not every once in a while. Preferably Twice. every day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then, like, preferably every day for 20 minutes, you know, while getting up, while getting up, bathing and so I'm just going in, sprinkle, and then just come out. No. Um, get you some smell good stuff. Get your hair done. You know, uh, uh, do what you have to do in the natural, and then God can take care of the rest. Another thing that you want to keep in mind while you're dating, you know, looking for your, your spouse, your husband, or your wifey, you want to make sure that you follow your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you get a check on the inside, you know, like, mm, you know, something, you know, just isn't right. I mean, everyone knows, you know what, I'm, what I mean. You know, that feeling like right in your gut. Right. That, you know, no matter like what, what, how you think about it or mm -hmm. if you try to dismiss it or whatever, it's still, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that feeling right there. Don't mm -hmm. dismiss it. Um, a lot of times people have been dating so long and they're like, well, you know, I, I don't want to, um, I know I'm getting this, um, you know, this check of this feeling, but I don't want to start all over. Honey, follow that, okay? <laughs> Get out of that and run. Right. Now, this isn't giving you permission to be suspicious. Right, right. Listen, I'm not saying be suspicious and be paranoid. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is that because Jesus lives in your heart, you know, if you're a Christian, if, G if Jesus is living in your heart, then your heart is a safe guide. Mm -hmm. He won't lead you wrong. So don't override what's on the inside of your heart. You're having that kind of scratchy feeling like she was saying, like, mm, I don't know. You know, it's perfectly okay to press pause and seek God about it. You know, and just, Lord, is this really what you want me to do? And seek out some godly counsel if you're kind of fuzzy about what it is you need to do with that, you know. Yeah, and godly counsel isn't, uh, you know, somebody that's single. You know what I'm saying? Very or someone good. someone who doesn't have a good track record in their relationships. Right. You know, talk to your pastor, you know, close... Um, you know, couples mm -hmm. that, you know, you feel like you can talk to, you know, that type of thing. But like you said, don't be suspicious or paranoid thinking, well, you know, mm -hmm. this is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he must be having something. Mm -hmm. He must got some kind of deep, dark secret. None of that. Because you'll None miss that. out. Right. You know, the man of your dreams, the woman of your dreams, just being cray cray. Right. Just follow your heart. Keep it simple. You, yeah, you can't go wrong there. Okay, and the last thing that we want to talk about is setting boundaries mm -hmm. um, while you're dating. Mm -hmm. Okay, one thing that you don't want to do, I see people do this all the time when they're dating, especially, you know, couples that, you know, they're dating for a while. One thing that you don't want to do is to give your, um, you know, the person you're dating, wife or husband, privileges. Mm -hmm. That's a big no-no. Right, You're right. asking for trouble if you do that. Right, so this is why I normally suggest that when you date, you don't date any longer than 18 months before an engagement begins. Right. Because, you know, if you date, if you, if it takes you that long to see if you want to, you know, marry, marry that person, mm -hmm. you may have a problem. Yeah, you don't need to marry him. You still don't know after 18 months, leave him alone, move on to somebody else. Yeah, we know other things come up too, like, you know, you want to wait to get married, you know, when you have like things like out the way, like, you know, if you're in college, you know, or that type of thing, you know, that's different. I'm just talking about like, you just don't really know what you want to do. Right, right. Y'all going back and forth, you know, about stupid stuff, childish stuff. No, grow up and then date. You know, now we dated a total of four years. Let me tell you why. We did that because number one, she was still in college at the time. I think you were a junior. And then number two, I was on the mission field. So nine months out of the year, I wasn't even with her. So you had to worry about me knocking boots every weekend because I, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, oh, no, I'm just saying. I mean, you had to worry about that with us because we were we were apart. There was an ocean in between. So, so I'm not. Don't make a a law out of what we're saying. What we're saying is is that you don't want to waste time. No, seek God. Be intentional with your dating. So you can get married and begin your married life. When I talk to um, you know young ladies or whatever, I always tell them you know don't give a man that you're dating your goodies. Okay, save that for marriage. Um, you know, and then even too with you know with that like the whole like you know being intimate thing like you know kissing, hugging that type of thing. I mean, with each person is different. So I mean, you know, that's up to you to determine like you know how far you can go. But you know, make sure that you don't you know cross right. you know. The obvious line. Like, right. I tell people, you know, I, I don't try to throw my convictions on anyone, but if you can, just wait until you're married. Right. To, you know, have sex with your wife. She don't throw her convictions on people, but I'll throw the Bible in a minute. And the Bible says fornication is wrong. Yeah. You know, fornication is a, is a cancer to your relationships. So just lock it up, clink, clink, do the shade, whatever you got to do, mm -hmm. and keep your goodies locked away, guys and gals. Keep right. your goodies locked away until you get married. Because yeah, a lot of times, if you're, uh, you know, if you're having sex before, you know, you're married. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard for you to make, you know, 
right decisions. Right. Because, you know, you're kind of attracted to the person sexually. Right. So... You ignore the other stuff. Yeah. So, so you don't want to do that. Yeah, just don't make that a factor at all. Just right. Save all that stuff to you marry you have the rest of your life to enjoy it. Right mm -hmm. way. And setting up boundaries early on in your relationship with this individual will carry on into other areas of your marriage should you decide to get married. Mm -hmm. Listen, self-control doesn't go out the window once you get married. You have to learn how to be self-controlled after you're married. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So if you can handle that, that little two-letter word, no, and then like, no sex, none of this other stuff while you are dating. When your life is hectic when you're married and you're not able to get the sex that you want, you don't come unglued because you've been practicing self-control the whole time. These lessons carry on into your marriage and it will make it rock if right. you learn these lessons. You'll be rocking. Come on, you'll be rocking and rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling after you get married. Right, after you get married. If you learn the lessons before. You get married. Mm -hmm. These are some good tips today. So this has been your marriage tip for today, uh, singles edition. If you like this video, or you know, if you would like us to do more videos like this, you know, like the video, leave little comments and stuff in the um, little comment box. Let us know if you like them, you want to see more, and uh, we'll do that. So as always, if you want to stay connected with us on social media, you can all of our information is listed in the description box below, so you can find us there. Great. This has been your marriage tip for today. Thanks for tuning in. See you again soon.